Glory. This is the night the Lord has made and we will rejoice because we have a choice. If God be with us, who can be against us? Amen. What a time, what a time, and what a time. Oh boy, what a time. We are seeing things that we would never thought we'd see. Can you imagine what's really going on right now? It's phenomenal. <laughs> We're all media shutting down our president so he can't communicate with his American people. That's pretty phenomenal. Now they stole the position through illegal operation. Now they're trying to impeach him. Now think about this. They're trying to impeach him right now in the Senate. The reason why they're trying to impeach him is because he signed an executive order that's going to destroy them. See, if they can get him out of office quick enough, it can't go through. Everything's about to be put under the military here shortly. And the commander-in-chief for the military is the president. And the commander-in-chief of the president is Jesus. <laughs> We're about to see phenomenal things. I'm going to share some things that are just, it's just overwhelming to me. The Spirit said to me, we are in the days of darkness. That's what we're going to talk about. We're about to hit seven days of darkness, starting the 13th. And it's about seven days of judgment from God Almighty. Now, in these times, there are things that we, we will see, we will hear, and there will be things that we won't see. Right now, everything seems like it's at a loss. But you know, Jesus shows up when everything seems lost. <laughs> Go to Genesis chapter 6, and we talk about this days of darkness. First of all, we must understand what we battle, what we're fighting. Remember, Jesus came to express the area that we do not fight flesh and blood, but we fight an unseen enemy that influences people. In Genesis 6 and verse 1, what you're about to hear, you don't hear in catechism you don't hear in cemetery school or seminary school. You don't hear these things because they're not led by the Spirit. And Genesis chapter 6 and verse 1, would you read it with me? Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them. Well, that was pretty simple. That the sons of God, now these are not God, men of God, these are angels. Now we've talked about this before, but many people have not understood this, and we need to be refreshed on this. It says that the sons of God, these are angels, saw that the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. So they took multiple wives. These were angels that put on flesh. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. Now we know that that didn't happen yet, but it came. And he said in verse 4, And there were giants on the face on the earth in those days. Now check this. There were giants. These giants were called Nephilim. Nephilim means fallen ones. These were offsprings of the angels that went in to the women and produced offsprings. Is everybody with me? Now, but it says that there were giants. Now look at this. It says that... that um, 
There were giants on the earth in those days and also afterward. After what? After when the sons of God, more angels, came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. Those were Nephilim. Those were mighty men who were of old men of renown. They were giants. Now you got to think, okay, wait a minute. The, uh, and, and if you read the book of Enoch, it explains that two, at a minimum of 200 angels put on flesh and came into the world and produced offsprings. Now this went on for almost 400 years. But the angels, the giants that were already there did not come from the other angels that came afterwards because it says that there were giants already there. Well, how were those giants all, all, already there? Because something happened in the garden. The serpent, known as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, symbolically tree means spirit or person. The serpent who was a shapeshifter, who was Lucifer, who was beautiful, who could change form. He enticed Eve. In other words, he seduced her and produced offsprings, two of them, Cain and Abel. One was righteous and one was wicked. Is everybody with me? Now, what did Cain do? He killed what? Abel. Now, who's the murderer? Who's the father of murderers? Lucifer. Serpent. Satan. The devil. Same person. Amen? So, from that lineage, Cain had offsprings. Well, how did he come into existence? Be through Eve and the serpent, a fallen angel. Amen? He had, they had offsprings. That's where those giants began to come forth. So when it says that there were giants on the earth during that time, and then more giants produced on the earth because the other angels came. Does everybody understand there? So we see this is called a Nephilim race. And that Nif Nephilim race is still here today. This is what we fight against. They believe that they were gods and goddesses. This was associated with the Egyptian and Babylonian empires, the Roman empires. They all believed that they were gods because of their wealth, their power, and their fame. They called themselves gods. Is everybody with me? Praise God. Let's go a little further. Verse 5. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Is that the mind of Satan or the mind of Christ? Mind of Satan. And the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast. Now beast is not associated with animal. It's associated with fallen ones. The Nephilim. Why? If you read the book of Revelation, it talks about the beasts. The beasts. Why? Because those are known as fallen angels. Creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Nephilim, fallen ones, giants, offsprings of the, or offsprings. They were known also as the mighty ones. There were fallen angels. So you had fallen angels and human DNA that came together. The first group, again, came from the serpent, shape, shapeshifter, Lucifer, who seduced Eve and produced a righteous and an evil offspring. Why? Because Eve was righteous. Amen? But the serpent was wicked. So there was one of each. In Genesis 2, it talks about Abel and Cain, and where Cain killed Abel, and his offspring became Nephilim race until for about, 200, for about 400 years. So even to this day, there's a mixture, isn't there, of DNA. That's why Jesus had to come. So we see here now that this race of Nephilim, or the serpent seed, continued for 400 years. In fact, they began to eat humans. The giants. They began to eat others. Cannibalistic. And our Lord rescued Noah, who was a righteous one. And that was an escape. 
And so all the ones he said, I'm going to kill everyone, right? So all the ones that died that were the Nephilim race, when their bodies were destroyed, their spirits were not. And that's what you call a demon. It's a disembodied spirit that once had a body from a Nephilim body. Does everybody understand that? So now they need a body to survive now. So what you're seeing right now, these are antichrists because serpents, Lucifer was an antichrist. Amen? So these spirits now invade human bodies and human bodies become hosts of them. Some people willingly and some people unwillingly. But they're always looking for a place to access a human being. Listen, a person doesn't murder someone just to murder someone. A person doesn't rape someone. That's not human DNA. That's a demon. Alcoholism is a demon. Addiction is a demon. Nicotine is a demon. These are self-destructive spirits. Does everybody understand that? And in this, this is what you're seeing right now. This is a fight between the Antichrist race, the Nephilim race, and the Christ race. Thank God you and I were born out of the, born again into the Christ race because you and I were Antichrist at one time. Why? Because we were born in the image of Lucifer, but had to be born again in the image of Christ. That's why you must be born again. Why? So that your blood changes. Your DNA changes now. You have a supernatural DNA. Now you have an eternal life DNA compared to a death DNA. Now we eat from the tree of life, not the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which produces death. That's why people think that they're good, they go to heaven. Fooled. Fooled. Good people do not go to heaven. Only the righteous go to heaven. But God is still has the last say, doesn't he? But I don't want to take no chances. <laughs> Luke 17. Oh, hallelujah. What a time to be alive. You and I are actually watching end time prophecy being fulfilled. End time events being fulfilled. We are watching this country that has been under the control of Satan for so many years being exposed now. The world being exposed. And all of these wealthy media uh, Google and all these other ones and Twitter and whatever that are run by Satan's kingdom. They're nullifying and coming against the righteous. And all media and everything against this president. Everything that's being exposed, they're, they're hiding it. They just shut, shut down a conservative, well-known website called Parler. Everybody was going to it. They just shut them down. They're shutting down everything so people do not know the truth. I mean, this is phenomenal to me. Thank God I'm not God. Because they wouldn't be. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I am his son. <laughs> so I can call fire down anywhere I want. Yeah. On a daily basis, even. I'm surprised they're still alive. I make it a point to destroy every single one of them. Every day. Every one of their regimes. They're evil. They hate us. They're human eaters, baby eaters. They are wicked. They're murderers, killers, and liars. And people are voting and promoting them thinking that they're called Christians. They're going to hell with them. Glory. Verse 22. Luke 17, verse 22. Let's speak it. Then Jesus said to the disciples, The days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, look here and look there. Do not go after them or follow them. 
For as the lightning that flashes out of the one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Now I want you to look at the parallel of it. Jesus had to suffer many things and be rejected by, this gener by that generation. You and I are now suffering many things and being rejected by this generation. So we know that the times that we're in are in parallel. In verse 26. And as it was in the days of Noah. What was it like in the days of Noah? The Nephilim race was ruling it. People were being killed. And God was making a way of escape for the righteous. So will also be in the days of the Son of Man. They will eat. They will. They drank. They married wives. And they were given in marriage. Hello. That means they didn't marry correctly. Until the day that Noah answered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, it was also in the days of Lot. Poor Lot. They ate. They drank. They bought, they sold, they planted, and they built. Now you got to remember, Sodom and Gomorrah was nothing but a Nephilim arena of perversion. Homosexuality, lesbian, everything. Transgender, everything was in that place. But that was how it was. Why? Because the demons from the time of Noah now infiltrated. Verse 29. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom and it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. And that day he who is on the housetop and his goods are in the house, let him not come down to take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life to preserve it will I tell you, in that night, there will be two men in one bed. The one will be taken, another will be left. Two women will be grinding together. The one will be taken, and one will be left. Two men will be in the field. The one will be taken, another left. This is called the rapture time. And they answered and said to him, Where, Lord? So he said to them, Wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Again, we are in the days of... Of Noah and Lot. The Nephilim race of false gods and goddesses self-proclaimed by their own wealth and power and influence. These are human hosts possessed by demon spirits. They are under control of the father of lies called the devil. Ephesians 6. So we've got to stop looking at the political. Remember, those, the word of the Lord was about stop looking at things and look at Christ or Antichrist. Ephesians 6 and verse 10. You know, God is trying to tell everyone, get your house in order. Get your house in order. He's not going to put up with fornication. He's not going to put up with lying. He's not going to put up with cheating. Judgment is in a house of God to be released also in the earth. We are going to see days of darkness. Now days of darkness is also associated with because we won't know everything that's going on. Amen? But we're going to have to trust God. We're going to have to trust him that he has a plan. And that he's for us and not against us. We can't fall in the arena of fear. Listen, you can't buy your way to heaven. You can't work your way to heaven. <laughs> Only Christ-like individuals make it to home. Ephesians 6.10, let's speak it. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the wilds. Of the devil. Trickery. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. But against principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness. In heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Or days of darkness. 
and having done all to stand. Then he tells us about getting dressed with the full armor of God. Again, we are known as, this is known as the days of darkness, standing against fear, demonic wisdom, strong delusion, and the unknown. Rulers of darkness. Again, this is the time of days like Egypt and Babylon and the Roman Empire, all ruled under the false doctrines of demons, false gods and goddesses. They are servants of darkness and worshipers of Satan. They are anti-Christ possessed individuals. This is what we're battling. We're not battling physical. We're battling spiritual. Amen. These are the days of darkness. Deuteronomy 13. We are not saved by our works. We are saved by our relationship. Amen. But again, if your relationship, if you truly have a relationship, then you don't want anything to interfere with your relationship. Sin will prevent a person from getting home. Hallelujah. Verse 1, Deuteronomy 13. Is everybody there? If there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or wonder comes to pass, of which he spoke to you, saying, Let us go after other gods which you have not known, and let us serve them. So he's saying there'll be false miracles, false signs. Amen? Why? To draw us away. Let me tell you what the New Age movement does. They use crystals and all kinds of other things. Listen, I've heard of many people getting healthy and healed. But then you know what happens? It draws them away from the healing power of Christ to the healing power of the world, of Satan's kingdom. Remember, the powers of darkness just want your soul. And they'll do everything to get it. Verse 3. He said, you shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. But that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken in order to turn you away from the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, which means bondage, and redeemed you from the house of what? Bondage. To entice you from the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall put away the evil from your midst. If your brother, the son of your mother, your son or your daughter, the wife of your bosom or your friend who is your own soul secretly entices you saying, let us go and serve other gods or false doctrines which you have not known, neither you nor your fathers of the gods of the people which are all around you, near to you or far from you, from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. You shall not consent with him. Or listen to him, nor shall your eye pity him, nor shall you spare him or conceal him, but you shall surely kill him. Now, um, thank God, you know, there's mercy these days. Amen, because there'll be a lot of dead people. But I can tell you there'll be a lot of fear, God-fearing people. So Jesus came so he could delay wrath. Does everybody understand that? But nobody, just because it's delayed doesn't mean you get away with it. Hallelujah. But you shall kill him. Yeah. Your hand shall be first against him to put him to death and afterward the hand of all the people. And you shall stone him with stones until he dies because he sought to entice you away from the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage. And what's he talking about? The Egyptian, Babylonian, and Roman Empire. That's the system we're under right now. It's called the Babylonian Empire. But it's still the Egyptian and Roman Empire that's still united together. These are the Nephilim race that we are under. They hold positions. Remember, principalities represents government positions. 
To be a principality is a government position. Then there's principalities of the heavenly government positions. Is everybody okay? Why? Because this is the Nephilim race. That is the Nephilim system that we're battling. In Exodus 9. Although when you, they get arrested for treason, they will be executed. That's the same as being stoned, I guess. Don't you think they want to get Trump out of office as quick as possible? Because many of them, many, you got to remember there's like 80 or 90,000 or something like that. I forgot how many thousands of, how much? The, uh, sealed indictments. 200,000 sealed indictments that haven't been released yet. That's going to be happening in this next seven days. All over the world. This is not just the United States. It's all over. They've already begun arresting in other countries. They've already shut down on many of the child smuggling operations and arrested them. There's many people in Guatemala. Another one, another organization in town. Yeah, everybody remember Seagram 7? Remember the, whatever. That family that owned Seagram was busted for the same thing. Child smuggling. Remember, they used children as money. They're evil and wicked. One of the words of prophecy is that the Lord releases said that um, this 2020 would be the beginning of showing how evil and wickedness the powers of darkness are and it will become more of a reality. And we're about to see it be unleashed and exposed. Exodus chapter 9. In verse 1. Glory. Let's speak it. Then the Lord said to Moses, go into Pharaoh. Now, did Pharaoh think he was a god? Yeah. And tell him, thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may serve me. That's what God is saying right now. That's why judgment's going to be here. Let my people go. You've held them in bondage. This country's been in bondage for so long. It's been sold out to the Nephilim race. It's been sold out to the global central banks. Do you know that your birth certificate, is, your social security is an organization number? It's like a corporate number. They actually use your social security as a purchase and they collect interest off of your being, your name. Does everybody understand that? See, we're not a republic, but it's trying to be turned back to a republic. It's an organization. It's a corporation. And you and I are just shares that they trade off and they collect money from. Man, when people begin to understand, remember, your taxes that are taken from you for the, our employment taxes... Income taxes, amen? None of that goes to any repairs or anything. It goes to the Federal Reserve, the central banks. So we actually labor for them and we pay them for us to work. I'd call that slavery. So you get a tax return because they use your money. But they're collecting interest off all that money you gave them. Is everybody okay? Man, this is reality. This is what's going on. This has been going on for centuries. Glory. Where were we? <laughs> Let my people go. That's what Jesus is saying now. Verse 2. For if you refuse to let them go and still hold them, behold, the hand of the Lord will be on your cattle in the field. This is their, st their stocks, their bonds, and their income. On the horses, on their transportation. On the donkeys. I don't have to figure that one out. On the camels, on the oxen, and on the sheep. 
and, 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 every, and very se severe pestilence. Well, I pray that too. Lord, vindicate us and plague them. I put them in the jail of salvation till they come to repentance. Then heal them. Then bring them in the kingdom. And the Lord will make a difference between the livestock of Israel, which is the righteous, and the livestock of Egypt. So nothing shall die of all that belongs to the children of Israel, nothing of ours. So even in his judgment, as long as you're right with God, and you're in position, your house is in order, nothing can touch you. But if you're not, the devil comes to steal, kill, and what? Destroy. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Then the Lord appointed a set time saying, tomorrow the Lord will do this thing in the land. What's today's date? 12? Well, there's no coincidence. I really believe tomorrow is the 13th. Seven days. Again, we may see some of it. We may not. See, right now, because Trump flew in and signed an executive order, and in this executive order, Anytime that there's been an influence uh, 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 from uh, foreign countries in illegal voting and they can prove it, which they d refuse to allow them to say anything about it, even in Congress, it brings the state under emergency and it brings the, gov the military under control to control everything. And again, the head of the military is Trump. So right now in Washington, D.C., there's like 10,000 um, uh, troops there that are uh, the um, National Guard. Now the mayor is in charge of the National Guard, so Trump let the mayor bring him in. But he's actually in a state of emergency. He's in charge of the National Guard also. So I, I'm telling you, this is a, all of this is because he's, they've allowed the whole plan to play out because they're going to bust all of them for treason. Hallelujah. He, Jesus is saying, let my people go. Again, we are entering. I really believe the days of darkness will be seven days of darkness. And darkness doesn't mean that we won't see. We might not understand everything. We might not see everything. Amen. In fact, there may be blackouts, which there already has been blackouts all over the world. And in that blackout, they're doing special ops. See, we have a space force where people don't really understand that is in full operation. And they are leading many of this against the Antichrist. And they know. See, the battle in this, they know it. They know this is Satan's kingdom. They know that this is not a, a physical fight, but it is a physical fight in an area because people are demonized and possessed by them. So they got to wipe them out physically also. But they know why they use these children. They know. I mean, they, they, they freak these kids out. They take them, they cut them, and they take their blood, and they use that, what do they call it, a, adrenal, whatever, adrenochrome, which supposedly makes them younger. You got Hollywood full of adrenochrome, and they take it, and they're destroying these children. I mean, it's, they're sick. Drinking blood. Hallelujah. Revelation 12. They're ignorant of all of this stuff. Heck, they're still wearing masks out there. How stupid can they be and still breathe? And they believe this plague stuff. The greatest plague is deception. They're walking around with rubber gloves. I call them Darth Vader operators. Verse 7, Revelation 12, 7. Man, if they're that easily taken deceptive, having to wear a mask, even when our Governor says, you don't need to. <laughs> you know that we are the number one. Well, now, people, the, the media and everyone lies. 
we are the least uh, affected by the so-called plague in the, in the country. And we are the most prosperous state in the country. And everybody's flocking here. Because they can go to the store. Their kids can go to school. Yeah, you can buy a house. We have the highest house sales in the country. We have more construction going on. This is the most prosperous state in the country. Of course, we're under a man of righteousness. I just saw him on some, uh, given a, uh, they, he's getting questioned by some reporter. He rebuked this reporter. They tried to, you know, snare him and so forth. But he's a wise man. <laughs> and they lie about the statistics. They're trying to prevent people from coming. Do you know that uh, California now will fine you for leaving? <laughs> I mean, come on. They'll fine you for leaving. Man, my grandparents came from Italy and never expected this to happen. Never. Verse 7. Revelation 12, 7. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. And this is where the Lord's reign is. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. Is he still doing it? Yes, look at all the people wearing masks. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying, In heaven now salvation and strength, that means power, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that his what? Time is is short. He knows his time is short. He knows that the harvest is, is going to begin here shortly. The great harvest. Yes, there's a harvest continuously, but there's the great harvest is about to come and manifest. The devil and his great wrath. He knows he's got a short time. Their time is coming to an end. This is why they're freaking out, fighting for their lives. They know. They lose this battle. It's over with. Now it will be a temporary victory. Does everybody understand? It will be enough for the harvest. Watch. Go to Matthew 13. Oh, happy days. Matthew 13. And verse 24. In another parable, Jesus put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? And he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat from with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. Until what? The harvest. Oh, glory. I love this. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, the angels are the reapers, first gather together the tares, 
and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Snap. Let's go a little, yes, that's it, yeah. See, they know their end is near because they know that there's a harvest about to manifest. The greatest harvest in history. Uh, Jude. Glory. Jude. Verse 5. Is everybody there? Everybody okay? Are you getting this? Let's speak it. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, after would destroy those who did not what? Believe. What's the word believe mean? Follow. Follow. So don't say you're a believer and not a follower. And the angels who did not keep their what? Proper domain. These are the what? Fallen angels. But left their own abode. He has reserved in the everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. In other words, the angels that put on flesh, that's where they are. Not the Nephilim. He killed all those. Because they were the offsprings. Those are what are demons now. But the angels that put on flesh are now reserved in judgment, in darkness. They will be released, you know, during tribulation. God will use them. Verse 7. And as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also, these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil dignitaries. Yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring a, against him a reviling accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Now you got to remember, Moses died. But the Lord wanted to go get Moses' body. Amen? Because that was symbolic about the rapture, those who are alive and those who have died. So, even still, he did not challenge Lucifer. Amen? He just said, the Lord rebuke you. There was no battle there. But he, got, he took Moses' body. Because the devil tried to take it. But these speak evil of whatever they do not what? No. And whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts, and these things they corrupt themselves. Woe to them without eternity. W-O-E. For they have gone in the way of who? Cain. Have run greedily in the air of Balaam. For profit and perished. In the rebellion of Korah. These are spots. Come on, read it with me. In your love feast. While they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by the winds. Late autumn trees without fruit. Twice dead, pulled up by the roots. Verse 13. Raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own Shame, wandering stars, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Nobody gets away with it. These are grumblers and complainers walking according to their own lusts. They have a mouth, great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. 
These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost or tongues, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Judgment is at hand, and the harvest is around the corner. Against the Nephilim race, judgment will be released. Amen? Ephesians 5. Ephesians chapter 5, in verse 8. Let's speak it together. For you were once darkness, but now you are light, and the Lord walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming at time because the days are evil or the days, these are the days of darkness. When he says days are evil, means days of darkness. Amen? We're to expose. In other words, what I want to do tonight also in the area to where Everybody needs, to, did you bring the booklets? We need to, listen, we need to arm as many people as possible. If you don't have booklets to hand out, make sure you get them. I want everyone to at least hand out to two different people that you haven't handed out one before. Wherever you go, hand one out. Two different people. If everybody will do that, that's two more people that will know truth. Amen? We must arm individuals. We must. Wherever you work, wherever you're going, get two. If you want four, if you want ten, whatever, get them and hand them out. Amen? We want to arm people. Glory to God. John chapter 8. Verse 42. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. And Jesus said to him, if God were your father, you would what? You would love me. You would love me. If God was your father, you would love me. Does everybody get what he's saying? See, because he says, if you love me, you obey me. So a lot of people say they're Christians, but they don't love Jesus. They say they love him, but they, their fruits say, no, they don't love him. See, there's a difference of loving someone or being in love with someone. I love my pets. But I'm not in love with them. Hello? That's why you're to love your enemy but not be in love with them. He said, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he who sent me. Verse 43. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. That's why people can't hear what we say. You are of your father the what? Come on, you are of your father the what? The devil and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a what? A lie. He speaks from his own what? Resources. He is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Think, think about how many people are not of God out there. They're not of, oh, they, they, believe, they believe there's a God, but they're not of God. 
There's a difference. They proclaim Christians, but they're not really, they're, they're really not. The word tells us that many antichrist spirits will come. Remember, this is antichrist we're battling against. Amen? Hallelujah. Go to Psalm 94. Hallelujah. Psalm 94, start at verse 1. We're going to sow this. It means you're supposed to speak it, okay? Glory to God. Let's speak it. O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs, O God, to whom vengeance belongs, shine forth. Rise up, O judge of the earth. Render punishment to the proud. Lord, how long will the wicked, how long will the wicked triumph? They utter speech and speak insolent things. All the workers of iniquity boast in themselves. They break in pieces your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless. That means the unborn. Yet they say the Lord does what? Does not see. That's how they think. Nor does the God of Jacob understand. Understand, you senseless morons, I mean, among the people, and you fools, when will you be what? Wise. He who planted the ear, shall he not hear? He who formed the eye, shall he not see? He who instructs the nation, shall he not correct? He who teaches man knowledge? The Lord knows the thoughts of man, that they are futile. Blessed is the man whom you instruct, O Lord, and teach out of your word or your law that you may give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not cast off his people, nor will he forsake his inheritance. Are we his inheritance? Yes. But judgment will return to righteousness, and all the upright in heart will follow it. Who will ri rise up for us against the evildoers? Who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul would have had settled in silence. If I say my foot slips, your mercy, O Lord, will hold me up. In a multitude of my anxieties within me, you comfort, your comforts delight my soul. Shall the throne of iniquity, which devises evil by law, have fellowship with you? They gather together against the life of the righteous and condemn innocent blood. But the Lord has been my defense and my God, the rock of my refuge. He has brought on them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. The Lord our God shall cut them off in Jesus' name. Philippians 3. Days of darkness. But you know what? We shine in darkness. Philippians 3, verse 17. Let's speak it together. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who walk as you have for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ who will transform our lonely body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. I'm going to close at 1 John 2. Hallelujah. Get your popcorn out and watch the show. If it's televised.
<laughs> Verse 15. This is what he keeps warning us, right? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour, and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is an antichrist and denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised to us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true and is not a lie, and just as it is taught you, you will abide in him, meaning you will abide in light, you will abide in truth. Why? Because we are in a time of days of darkness. So hang tough. Battle through. Fight. Warfare. You know, that booklet's got that, uh, um, uh, what's it called? The uh, Prayer for America. Arming America Prayer. Pray it. Calling down fire. Man, warfare like you've never warfared before. And get these booklets out to as many people as possible. It is vital. We've been sharing this for a while. Amen. <clears throat> There's a great harvest about to happen. We're about to see the reward of the wicked. It ain't over. Amen. It's not over. Until the devil screams. <laughs> and he's gonna. He's screaming right now. They know they're, they're snagged. They know they're caught. They're trying to hide and lie as much as they can. Of course, the father of lies. Amen. What a time to be alive, though. You and I are seeing all of this stuff. It still baffles me. I'm just excited about all of what's going on because we're alive to see the return of the Lord. We're alive to see the harvest of God Almighty. And we're also alive to see the rapture, to be a part of it. But man, your house better be in order. Got to be in order. Amen. He's coming for a blemish free bride. That's the difference between the body of Christ and the bride. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And again, what has been imparted in us tonight, Lord, seal it with the Holy Spirit. Bring conviction, counsel, and correction. And bring preparation. And bring the aggressive anointing that we may be bold to stand for the truth and not wimps. And Lord, invade this earth. Invade it. We welcome your invasion in every area through the body, through your angels, through your word, and through your presence to expose the evilness and wickedness and vindication to the righteous in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.